Zero, zero. Yeah, zero, one will work. Okay, that, that's, have yourself an alternate plan there. If zero, zero doesn't work, pick another point every time that you can check. I like to pick zero, one because I know it's going to work every time if zero, zero doesn't. So we'll check zero, one. That means zero for x, one for y, and we check that back in our original inequality. So that's two times zero less than one. 2 times 0 less than 1, we've got 0 is less than 1. 0 is less than 1. Is that true or is that false? Make sure you're identifying the point that you're checking. Make sure you know what that is. Because that's important, right? That's going to tell you what side to shape. So we just identified that we're checking 0, 1. That's right here, 0, 1. This point was true or false? So are we going to shade, let's call this the top half, are we going to shade the top half or are we going to shade the bottom half plane? Which one? Definitely the top. The, the point was true, that means all these points are true, we shade this part. Which raise half feel okay with that part? Good deal. So that was, that was half our problem basically right there. We did our first equation, our first inequality, uh, and now we're going to do the second one. We do exactly the same thing that we just did. It's just we have to do it on the same axis. So it's going to get some crossover, and where actually the shading crosses over, that's our solution set. That's what we're looking for. So let's work on the second one together, and then uh, we'll do one more after that, and I'll, I'll let you go on your own. So let's look at inequality number two. Again, we temporarily set these things equal instead of the inequality. So 5x plus y equals 5 for now. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, will the cover up method work for this problem? Yes. Yeah, because we actually have a constant there. So when we do this, we'll say, all right, if I want to find x-intercepts, I cover up everything except the x. So I write out 5x equals 5. If 5x equals 5, how much does x equal? One. Well, there's 1. If I want to find the y-intercept, I cover up everything except the y. So cover up the y to find the x-intercept, cover up the x to find the y-intercept, and there's my two intercepts. x equals 1, y equals 5. Imagine if you're still okay on that. Let's plot these things. x equals 1, that says I'm going to be on the x-axis at positive 1, I'll put a big point right there. Y equals 5 says I'm on the Y axis up 5, because it's positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's way up here. And we're going to graph that line now. Notice how we're ignoring the purple shading and everything right now. We're ignoring all that stuff. We're just looking at this inequality by itself, just like we looked at this one by itself. So we'll graph our line. So far, so good? All right. You mean it's supposed to be solid like that? Oh, OK, it's supposed to be dashed. So go back and make yours dashed. There we go. And we still need to check a point. Can you tell me what point we're going to check in this instance for this inequality? For sure, yeah. It's not on the line. Go back to the zero, zero. You don't have to check the same point in both inequalities. Pick whatever one works for you, whatever one's easiest. In this case, zero, zero is going to be easiest. The reason why it's easiest is it makes one entire side of our inequality equal to zero be like that. So we're back here at our original inequality. That's five times zero plus zero is greater than five. Or in other words, zero is bigger than five. Is that a true statement or a false statement? False. Definitely. Definitely false. So we checked 0, 0 in this case. We checked that point. This is going to be weird because it's on the other line, right? But you have to, you have to ignore that other line. You have to ignore the purple line right now. We're just looking at the, the black line with our, our black point over here. So we checked that point. This point did not work. That means that every point on this half plane of our, of our graph here doesn't work for my black line. That means the other side is the side we're going to shade. So we check this point. It did not work for our black line. We're going to shade the other side. 
That's all this stuff. Be generous with your shading. Make sure you shade a lot. Don't just shade a little teeny part of your line, right? Shade the whole half side. That's what we're doing here. How many people were able to follow that along and get that, that shading as well? Do you see the solution set? Yeah. yeah, it's not here. This is nothing. This is just purple. That's just black. The black and the purple, that's our solutions. Let's try one more together. I'll show you a couple more things on this. And I'll let you do a couple on your own. So we got negative 2x plus 5y is less than 10. We got y is less than or equal to 3. Let's see how this thing plays out. So if I look at my first inequality first, my second inequality second, the first inequality is telling me I got negative 2x plus 5 less than 10. I'm going to temporarily set that thing equal because that's how we do our graphing. We make sure it's equal so we can find our intercepts. It's just a temporary step. We don't do this for every time we see an inequality, just if we're trying to graph our linear inequalities on a graph like this. Hey, will the cover-up method work? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So to find our x-intercept, which one do I cover up again? So I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to write what's remaining. I'll be dividing by negative 2. There's at most one more step after that. We get x equals negative 5. At least I have my x-intercept. To find the y-intercept, we do the opposite. We cover up the x term, everything but the y. Still we'll divide. And we have our intercepts already. So let's go ahead and plot those things under graph. I know that x equals negative 5 means I'm going to go over here, negative 5 on the x-axis, put a nice point. And y equals 2 says I'm going up 2 on the y-axis. I'll put a point, and then we can graph our line. By the way, is it a solid or a dotted line in this case? Solid. Everyone needs to know that. Dotted. Okay, good. Can you see why it's dotted? Okay, we're looking up here, right? Not right here. What point am I going to check? Let's do it. So we check 0, 0. If we do that, we're going to have negative 2 times 0 plus 5 times 0 is less than 10. We're rewriting the original inequality. It says 0 is less than 10. Is 0 less than 10? Is that a true statement or a false statement, folks? Perfect. So we identify the point that we just checked. We checked 0, 0. 0, 0 was true, signifying that this entire half plane of that line is true. So we're going to go ahead and shade the whole thing. Hey, we're done with one. They go pretty quick once you get the hang of it, don't they? Cover up, cover up, grab it, shade it, done. Awesome. It's kind of nice. Now, the second one, inequality number two. We have y is less than or equal to 3. Again, we're going to set the thing equal, just temporarily. Just temporarily. Do you remember, so I put this one on the board here for us, do you remember what y equals 3 is? Horizontal. Hor uh, horizontal what? Line. So we have a line there. Horizontal line. Remember we talking about that yesterday? Mm -hmm. Got a horizontal line at y equals 3. And you know what? The reason why we can say this is horizontal, if you think about it, there's only a y. There's no x's. So that means if y equals a number, sure, you're going to be crossing the y-axis, y-axis, y-value, at 3. But if it doesn't have an x, that means you're not crossing the x. So if there's no x, can you possibly be like this, or like this, or like this? No, that, that would be crossing the x. That would say you would have an x-intercept. So if you have no x, there's no x-intercept, that means you have to be a horizontal line. Otherwise, you're going to be crossing that, that axis.
We're going to keep that one solid because of this right here. That says equals, so that's a solid line right at y equals 3. Hey, do we still have to shade it? But you know what? It's kind of nice. If you look back up here, this right here tells you the direction of shade just like a number line would. The only thing is with the y, you kind of have to tilt your paper like this for me. If this is a number line with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, all that stuff, this is shading to the left of 3. Left of 3 would be below 3 in this case. Do you guys see that? See what I'm about? Otherwise, you could check a point, too. You could do that. So if you check 0, 0, if you want to check that here, your x-coordinate is 0. What do you do with the x-coordinate? Nothing. There's no x to plug it into. You with me on that? Yeah. The y coordinate is zero also. That's okay. This just says zero less than or equal to three. Is zero less than or equal to three? <laughs> That's true. We checked zero, zero again. It was true. That means I'll shade below the purple line. That's what that said. So either way you want to do that, that's fine. You can check the point or you can look at it like a number line. Either way is going to work. Just make sure when you're shading this, we're, not, we're ignoring the black line right now. We're just looking at the purple. We're shading all of this stuff. Do you guys see where the crossover is on this graph? Mm -hmm. yeah, nothing's up here. It's not right here. That's just the purple stuff. It's not right here. That's just the black stuff. It's this obtuse looking angle with all the shaded below it. That's a, that's a large half plane. I hope you feel okay with these two examples. Good. All right. I'm going to give you one of you on your own right there, and then I'll race that one and give you another one. Why don't you try these on your own? I'll be walking around. If you need help, let me know. Get started on that one. Bless you. Thank you. 